Now I want to talk about something very important. If you want to make your life a lot easier or you want to take programming more seriously, then you need to be using comments. So what are comments? If you have a very complex application or a very complex line of code, it's really long and maybe you knew what it meant at the time, but if you come back to this a year or two later, you might have totally forgotten what it meant or the craziness you were typing at the time. So that is why comments are very useful. It's a reminder, mainly to yourself, but if you're working with a team of people, it also tells them what the code does without them having to kind of read and understand all the complexity. So we can do comments in three ways in C Sharp. The first one is a one line comment. So we could do that for example and you can see when I leave a comment it's green now this comment here it does not get run by the software when you produce your software like an exe for Windows it doesn't get compiled into it so you don't waste space or megabytes with the comments so these are really useful and again if you have something really complex it just kinda tells you what the next line does so we can put comments on pretty much any line we want. We can put them after a line. Again, they don't get run, so there's no red line underneath. And it just really tells you what the next line does. Generally, people put the comment above the code and not next to it, but you can put it next to it if you wish. Uh, so let's just put some comments here. So you can kind of see roughly how it works. So here I'm going to say, So we know this line keeps that black window open, so I can put a comment that says, you know, it keeps the window open. Uh, this one, it says, say hello to user. So I could put a comment that says, say hello. So when I come back to this a year later, uh, and I've forgotten everything about C Sharp, because that always happens with languages, <laughs> you can open this and instantly know what each of these lines do. And you don't want to go crazy with comments. You don't want every line to have a comment. But definitely, if you don't understand something, um, then definitely put a comment there because it will remind you again and you can get back into it a lot quicker. So that is a single line comment. The next thing you can do is a multi-line comment. And that is one forward slash followed by an asterisk. And then if I press enter, you can see it creates asterisks on every line until I end it with one more forward slash. Now anything I type here is all inside the comment. And this is useful when you want to kind of introduce maybe a method or a whole what's called a class. This is the whole thing we're working with right now. And you want to say, um, say you're working on a team of 10 people and at the top of the file you want to say who made it because if there's a problem then they can say okay Bob wrote this whole section of the software we know because you know the author is Bob and then Bob when he makes this um, you know part of the program he can say I I made this uh, don't hate me um, then he can summarize what it is. It's a music player. Uh, it's great. Um, anything he wants in there. So it's really up to you. But this is how to do a multi-line comment. And they are useful for sort of identifying maybe who wrote the file and maybe roughly what it does. So that way people don't have to read every method and try and work out what this file does. So generally, multi-line comments go at the top of files, maybe up here. So the first thing people can see, or it can go above something very complicated like a method or something like that. So that's generally where people would use a multi-line comment when you want to write a lot of single liners, for example. So the last kind of comment I want to talk about is what's called an XML summary tag. Now it's not really like a comment like this per se, but it gives you important feedback. Um, it gives you kind of plain English feedback on what maybe the next line of code does. But we kind of use these for maybe methods or things like that. 
So if you have a complicated method, maybe it's like a hundred lines long, it does all this fancy stuff, and maybe the name of the method doesn't really do it justice. Um, it, it might say ask for user's name, but it does lots of other stuff in there. And maybe it returns something that might be a bit complicated, or it has lots of parameters and you might not know necessarily what they mean. So we can use what's called an XML summary tag to sort of expand on this. So if uh, where I call my method here, I hover over it with my mouse, you can see it doesn't really say much. It says string program dot ask for user's name. However, if I hover over this one, console.readline, look at all that information there. It's saying reads the next line of characters, it's telling me what it returns, it's telling you know, lots of different information. So I'm thinking, oh, well, where's that on mine? How do I set that up? And that's what's called an XML summary tag. So above our method here, do three forward slashes, one, two, and when you do the third one, it creates this nice little template for us, and it's in XML format. So here's the open summary tag, here's the closing one. And that represents the information here, which says reads the next line of characters from the standard input. So here, I sort of define roughly what this method does. So if someone hovers their mouse over here, they can quickly see what it does without having to read a hundred lines of code, for example. So it's giving the uh, other developers uh, information on what this method does. So for example, you want to give it a very descriptive uh, thing. So now when I hover over this, oh, okay, it asks for a user's name. Oh yeah, I forgot I built a secret Bitcoin miner in here. So for example, you can put whatever you want in here, but it's for your benefit. So imagine you put your software away for 10 years, you come back 10 years later, you've forgotten everything, but now you can just simply hover your mouse over here. And, oh, that, yeah, of course, I forgot about that. So it, it's good for your benefit, but it, it's also good for other developers, maybe on your team, for example. And inside here, we have two returns tags. And that's just roughly what's being returned. So we're returning the name of the user. So remember, it's the first... So you can put a little hint in here. So when we get the user's name, oh, we're saying, oh, remember, it's only their first name. So when we hover over here, we can see it returns the name of the user, but we're reminding ourselves it's only their first name. So this is why uh, these XML summary tags are useful, because when you hover your mouse over here, in an instant, you know exactly what it does in plain English. So these are really useful. And you can see this method has a one parameter here. So when I do the same thing here, we have an extra thing here. So again, we can use our summary, like say it says hello, say hello to the user. And parameter defines what our parameter does, like what information we give to it. So it will be the user's first, the user's first name. So this is for say hello to user. So when I hover over this, we can see here, say hello to the user. And when I open the bracket here, it's telling me what the parameter it, it, it expects. So string name, what is that? Full name? Is it first name, last name, nickname? But when I look down here, oh, it's the first name, of course. Yeah, because we're reminding ourselves, we're telling our user, when we call our method, exactly what our method does, what it expects as a parameter, and also what it returns back. So there are the three different uh, kind of comments you can use in C-sharp.